Hopefully you just finished watching the first video. In the first video, we learned how to take a set of data, such as the circumferences of a set of trees, and determine the class size to be used in a frequency distribution table. Now, in this next video, we're going to actually take our information, that is, our circumferences of the trees, along with the class size, and actually create the distribution table. And then we'll take a look to see what it looks like. So let's do that. All right, so we've decided that our classes are going to be of size 7, and we're going to have five of them. Well, so that means that in order to make this fit nicely between 11 and 41, what we're going to do in this case is start with 9. Okay? So, if my first class starts at 9 and the class is size 7, that means the next class must start 7 more and must start at 16. The next class, 7 more, is going to start at 23, 7 more. The next one will start at 30. That's four classes. And my last class will start at 37. And once again, these are representing inches, the circumference of the trees. So that means if 16 is the beginning of my second class, then my first one ends at 15. My third one starts at 23, so this ends at 22. In the same way, this ends at 29. The fourth class ends at 36. And this one goes all the way up to 43. And notice this does encompass my very smallest value of 11 and my biggest value of 41. Keep in mind, just like I rounded these values to the nearest inch, these classes are obviously all going to be whole numbers, values, but keep in mind that a range from 9 to 15 really incorporates any value from 8.5 all the way up to 15.5. Up to this class really contains actual measurements of anything from 15.5 to 22 and a half. The third one is 22 and a half to 29 and a half. This one is 29 and a half to 37 and a half. But I'm sorry, 36 and a half. And of course, this one is anywhere from 36 and a half up to 43 and a half. Okay. Well, it is time to construct the distribution table itself in the frequency column. And all we do is make little tick marks as we go through each one and see where it fits. So, let's see if we can get both of these on the screen. I think so. And, uh, yeah. First tree, 11. 11 fits in my first class, so I'll put a tick mark there. There's, there's a 1. The second tree was 20, so that's going to go in my second grouping here. Can you see that? Okay, my third th tree was 28. That's going to go in my third grouping. I may be a little bit off the screen. So what we can do here, let me zoom out just a little bit. Okay, hopefully we can get a little more information here. Okay, the fourth tree is 28. That puts us here, and I'll just continue. Fifth tree is 27. That's also here. Sixth tree was 36. That's going to be down in this class. Seventh tree is 41. That's going to be in my biggest class. 8 3 was 35. That's this class. If we can read these, I think we can see most of them, can't we? If I shift it up a little bit. There we go. 9 3 was 30. It's here. 10 3 was 23. That's this class. 11 3 had a circumference of 15 inches. That's in my first class. 16, my second class. 34 is down here. 23 is here. So I'll make that a group of 5. 15, 3 is 25. That's another one here. 30, that's in this class. I have a 27. That's here. And a 26 is also here. So this is a picture of how the circumference of my 18 trees is distributed, making an arbitrary five classes of size 7 from 9 to 43 inches. This is what it looks like. And it's pretty much what I would have guessed. I would have guessed that I had a few trees that were kind of small and a few trees that were kind of big, but most of the trees would pretty much fall in the middle in the average. 
And that's pretty much what exactly what happened with this 18. You will fi find out in everyday life and in nature and in human activities, that is very, very often the type of shape you'll get. You'll get a small start, becomes large, and down again. If we turn this 90 degrees, we get the well-known normal distribution curve. Very typical. And if I had more and more trees, I could add more and more data, this would become even closer to a, to a curve shape like this. So this is what we call a normal distribution curve. And we can see this clearly in my frequency distribution table. For now, uh, that's all we're talking about. We'll continue using these values for other exercises, but for now, this is, ends the discussion of a frequency distribution table.